So hello and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Cassandra Ray, the spiritual director, and we are an inclusive learning center of practical spirituality. This is a place for your whole self. May you find refuge here. May you receive spiritual nourishment that uplifts and inspires you. And may we all join together in co-creating a loving, vibrant world that works for all. So as we begin our gathering today, I respectfully acknowledge that I live and work on the traditional and unceded territory of the Coast Salish First Nations, including Kwikwetlam, tsleil and Stalo Nations. And as we recognize the indigenous lands that we are occupying at this time, I want to invite all of us to begin today with a moment of silence in honor of the 215 bodies that have been unearthed at a residential school in Kamloops, British Columbia. It's only a few hours from here in the lower mainland, Vancouver area. And so we, we will take this time to simply acknowledge what has happened in the past and what is still unfolding today in the families and descendants of the children who were buried at the residential school. And also just recognizing that this is, this is happening here. And for each one of us to, to take that into our heart, into the light of awareness, you know, a couple of months ago, I did a whole series on the book of forgiveness. And in that book, the first step of forgiveness is to tell the story. These bodies that have been found, these remains, they're telling us a story. Let us take a moment to pause, to listen, to recognize and honor. And I invite you now to turn within as we take it to prayer. And just recognizing the source of all life, this infinite presence of love, and creative power and harmony that is the divine. It is right here. Right here in this moment, this presence and power and back of all life. It is where each one of us come from, where each one of us returns to. It has no beginning or end. It is eternal and infinite. And so I just recognize that this life, that it is holding each one of us that are here, that it is holding each one of these sacred lives that have been lost, and that it is moving all of us into a greater expression of, of connection and oneness, of belonging, support and celebration. This infinite presence of love has created this diverse universe. Humans are created in different sizes and shapes and cultures and colors. And, and I just recognize that all of this is an expression of the divine. And so I allow my heart to open and I allow this divine love to come forward. I recognize the wholeness in myself and I recognize the wholeness of each one present here, of each one in this world. And just knowing that the divine is moving all of us to this greater expression and that each one of us is called to be present, play a part, 
And so I just affirm that this community is an uplifting community that empowers each one of us to hold space for this pain, to experience it, and also to be a part of bringing the light to that pain to each other. So my heart fills with gratitude for the willingness to be in community, to lift each other up without turning away, knowing that we are all called to be our individual and collective purpose, knowing that a great healing is happening right here and right now in Canada, in the world and beyond. I just give thanks for this truth, for this community, for this healing. And I let it all be. And so it is. Just need to breathe for a second. <laughs> and I'm so grateful today to welcome Linda Kidder our guest musician, such a wonderful presence and voice and talent that Linda is. She brings this bubbly, effervescent, open heart. She's just willing to share her voice and her talent with such generosity. She is award-winning, renowned, played with some amazing people. And today we are blessed by her presence, her talent, and her voice. Please join me in welcoming Linda Kidder. Thank you. Gosh, what a, what a fantastic introduction. Thank you so much.
Please pass at dizzying speed In my glacial evolution I have everything, everything I need I got me a friend I haven't seen for years we talked on the phone And she held my tears Oceans of future Stretching straight ahead With ones I love And woolen socks And road trips down the bend And I know what I'm made of I've taken my stock I've accepted my turn and I am airtight I'm turning with the tide and everything is alright I'm turning with the tide and everything is alright affiliated with the Centers for Spiritual Living. And it's a, you know, an international spiritual organization. And, and we have, you know, an annual theme, monthly themes, weekly talk titles that, that many of us around North America and the world are focusing on every Sunday. And, and as you can imagine, it's quite, you know, uh, a thing to get, you know, 350, 400 communities, you know, having all the same theme and so forth. So we do it way in advance, like a year before we know what the next year is going to be, you know, we're visioning and planning and, 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 and so here we are, June 6, 2021, with a talk title called Pushed by Pain. You know, this talk title was probably scheduled a year ago or more <laughs> and yet it couldn't be more perfect <laughs> for where we're at right now and what we're doing today is I'm inviting you to revolutionize your relationship with pain and by pain I'm referring to mental emotional or psychological pain Today, we're not talking about physical pain. However, I don't want to diminish the very real challenge of physical pain. So I just want to throw this out there that, that one of my favorite resources around chronic physical pain is a book called Belonging by a Canadian author, mystic, and dream worker, Toko Pa Turner. In it, there's a chapter called Pain as Sacred Ally and I, I highly recommend it. And, and if you're here with us live on Zoom, you can also put in the chat your recommendations um, for books on pain, because it's definitely a, a, a call for healing and a call for conscious attention and support and community whenever there's pain. So now you might be asking, why are we revolutionizing our relationship with pain? And Michael A. Singer, the author of this month's, this month's book of the month titled The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself, says it so beautifully. I'm just going to start by reading to you a piece from a chapter called Pain, The Price of Freedom. One of the essential requirements for true spiritual growth and deep personal transformation is coming to peace with pain. No expansion or evolution can take place without change. And periods of change are not always comfortable. Change involves challenging what is familiar to us and daring to question our traditional needs for safety, comfort, and control. This is often 
perceived as a painful experience. Okay, coming to peace with pain, embracing change, challenging the status quo, and taking risks for spiritual growth and transformation. Sure, no problem. I can squeeze that in this week, I think. <laughs> you know, while we tend to love spiritual ideas, it's something completely different to, to take those ideas and to live them in your life, your work, your relationships. It's no joke, right? <laughs> So thankfully, this week, I'm also drawing upon the wisdom of Tracy Brown, who's providing with us three ways to come to peace with pain. I, I love how Tracy Brown's wisdom and Michael Singer's wisdom from the untethered soul, they, they come together so beautifully. Now, you might not know who Tracy Brown is, so I just want to let you know that she's a a licensed practitioner with the Centers for Spiritual Living. She's an author, consultant, and coach. She's been a student of New Thought Ancient Wisdom since 1986. She served as the chair of the Leadership Council of the Centers for Spiritual Living, which is our parent organization. And she's also the founder and moderator of a Facebook group called What's Mine to Do? And that group challenges people of, of faith, of all faiths, not just CSL, but challenges people of faith to be proactive in reducing race-based hatred and violence. So it's a Facebook group called What's Mine to Do. You're welcome to check it out. So Tracy claims that pain is the perfect fertilizer. And so I want to read to you from a document on my computer what she says. Here's what she says. She says, your life goes through seasons just like a garden. Pain is like the fertilizer you use to prepare the grass, flowers, or trees to grow. Hmm. Fertilizers work by providing essential nutrients required for a strong and healthy plant. So how is your pain providing an essential ingredient required for your development? What is the pain guiding you to release, enhance, or substitute in order to achieve the dynamic, meaningful, and fulfilling life you desire? Think of pain as preparing the soil of your life to represent your deepest soul purpose. Beautiful, right? There's a tendency or okay, at least I have a tendency to think of pain as bad. And then I judge it as wrong. But when we start to look at it as fertilizer, it simply becomes part of living your deepest soul purpose. Don't you love that? Your deepest soul purpose? So Singer, the author of Untethered Soul, provides many perspectives that can help us look at pain as fertilizer. And one of my personal favorites is that he invites us to consider and to, to, to really to ask this question, to answer this question, who are you? Who are you? Now, this might seem like a very simple question, but in the book, he takes you through a process of eliminating the things you might think you are that you aren't really, such as you aren't your name. That's just a collection of letters, a label that people call you. Even if you had a different name, you would still be you. So you aren't your roles either. Roles like at your job as a manager or as a husband or sister or parent, those roles come and go. 
but you remain. So you aren't your roles. And you also, you aren't your past. Experiences also come and go. You could have gone to a different high school and yet you'd still be you. So you aren't your body. Your body has been different shapes and sizes throughout your life, but you were always there, no matter the shape or size. You're not the things you see out there in the world, right? You're the one looking out at the world. You aren't your emotions. You are the one who feels the various emotions. And in the same way, you aren't your thoughts. You are the one who is aware of your thoughts. Well, okay, if you aren't all of these things, then who are you? Singer asserts that you are the consciousness that sees, feels, and has both inner and outer experiences. He says that consciousness is pure awareness. And here's what he writes. At each stage of your life, you have seen different thoughts, emotions, and objects pass before you but you have always been the conscious receiver of all that was. So whatever is happening, you are the one who is witnessing it happen. Now this can help provide some distance from the experience so that you can make peace with pain. Understanding that the thoughts are just thoughts. The feelings are just feelings. And that all of it, including the experience itself, is going to come and go. And from this place, you are free to explore the pain as fertilizer, providing something essential for your growth, for your full expression. What is it teaching you? What is the pain teaching you? Tracy Brown's second idea is that pain is not punishment. And here's what she says. Stop thinking you must have done something wrong if you are experiencing something painful. It's more likely that you have either set a clear intention or have identified a deep desire to change. Therefore, anything not in alignment with your best and highest good must come forward to be replaced. Recognize how today's painful experience is helping you move away from something that is out of alignment with your deepest desires. Identify how this pain is pushing you toward what you really want. And now is the time to do the work to get through that barrier to your best life. Hmm. Hmm. Move through that barrier to your best life. How might you do that? Singer gives us some help here. Let's see. Let's see what he says. When you feel pain, simply view it as energy. Just start seeing these inner experiences as energy passing through your heart and before the eye of your consciousness. Then relax. Do the opposite of contracting and closing. Relax and release. Relax your heart until you are actually face to face with, with the exact place where it hurts. Stay open and receptive so you can be present right where the tension is. You must be willing to be present right at the place of the tightness and pain, and then relax and go even deeper. 
This is very deep growth and transformation, but you will not want to do this. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? You will feel tremendous resistance to doing this, and that's what makes it so powerful. As you relax and feel the resistance, the heart will want to pull away, to close, to protect, and to defend itself. Keep relaxing. Relax your shoulders and relax your heart. Let go and give room for the pain to pass through you. It's just energy. Just see it as energy and let it go. Remember who you are. You are the one listening to the thoughts and noticing the feelings. If you can stay with it, the pain will come and go. It is energy that is moving. When you stay open, present, and receptive, the energy continues to move. If you close to the pain, then you keep it stuck inside of you. The energy gets stuck. And Singer tells us that if you relax, then the pain will have its moment before your awareness, and then it will pass. It will have its moment before your awareness. So Tracy Brown's third and last idea for today is to let your pain, let pain be your pathway. And here's what she says. It's important to acknowledge the pain that you're experiencing right now, but you can't let it stop you from moving toward a brighter future or a better life. Replace the consciousness that delivered the pain with a renewed commitment to demonstrate your best life yet. Choose the qualities of God that have been missing. Increase your spiritual practice. You will notice that as you shed the old ways and false beliefs, your faith deepens and you begin manifesting the life you have longed for. Your journey through the pain is your pathway to joy. Hmm. Yes, pain doesn't have to be the ending. It can be the beginning. Pain can even be the catalyst that ushers us into a new pathway of transformation, of peace, of joy, and even love. So Singer writes, eventually you will understand that there is an ocean of love behind all of this fear and pain. That force will sustain you by feeding your heart from deep within. Over time, you will form an intensely personal relationship with this beautiful inner force. It will replace the relationship you currently have with inner pain and disturbance. Now peace and love will run your life. And when you pass beyond the layer of pain, you will finally be free from the binds of the psyche. So could it be that collectively we have set an intention for harmony, connection, and belonging and not just in our homes or in our chosen spiritual centers, but in the world. Ooh, I almost knocked over my water. I got so excited. <laughs> Could it be that we have set this collective intention for greater sense of love, belonging, and harmony across differences, across ideologies, across beliefs, across race, and so could it be that we have unearthed these bodies at this time because we are ready to heal? We are ready for something new. We have set a new intention. We are calling it forth. We cannot turn away now. We must breathe. And invite in this pain as fertilizer recognizing that it might be a function of our power itself that has called 
that we have called it forward. And so now is the time to grow this spiritual practice, to grow our capacity to just be with it, breathing and relaxing through this experience, through this energy, knowing that as we do this, as we come face to face with it, with this collective pain and with anything you might be going through individually, as you face it and relax through it, the energy can move and you can reconnect with the truth of your wholeness, the truth of who you are. So this week, I invite you to spend intentional time remembering who you are. Practice staying open, present, and relaxed in the experience of pain. Increase your spiritual practice. Specifically, I invite you to meditate. With conscious intention, sit in the space of being the one who notices the thoughts, watches the feelings as they come and go. You are an ocean of consciousness and love. We think that meditation is supposed to feel peaceful. It is not. <laughs> that is not the goal. While the goal is to come to peace, to have a sense of peace, in your meditation, you might see the dissonance, you might see the disturbance, you might see the stuff. Just keep pulling yourself back. I am the one who is seeing this. This is not me. I am the one who is seeing this. Because I am seeing it, I have a power to choose something different. I have the power to return to this ocean of consciousness and love. You, you see, you are life itself. You are sacred and infinite. Make your commitment to your spiritual practice this week and find out how you can be supported. I'm supported by an app on my phone. I'm supported by my mentor, my sponsor, my friends. We even have a Tuesday meditation that you can go to, 10 a.m. Pacific, where you can be in meditation together. We meditate every Sunday here. That's two days a week right there. Every Sunday, every Tuesday, right there. Even if you give yourself 10 minutes, give yourself 10 minutes to feel this ocean of awareness and love. May you know this love. May you amplify this love. And may you be free of pain and the sources of pain. May you truly know in your bones, in the depth of your being, that you are loved. Allow this love to move and inspire you for what is yours to do. And may we do this together. And so it is. Let's take it into prayer. Let's go right into that place inside, that place that knows that it is watching, that it is listening, that it is experiencing this human life the part that knows that it is eternal, that it is infinite, this ocean of awareness and love that exists in back of everyone and everything, right in this place, the wholeness of harmony. I claim, affirm, and know that this is the truth of myself. And as I know this of myself, I know this of each one present here right now. Oh, the possibilities that exist. I, what I claim and affirm and know of each one in this community is that truly the essence of each one is stronger than any pain. And that this, any pain that might be felt or experienced is actually fertilizer, bringing something essential forward for the growth and transformation, for a, a deepening consciousness of love and belonging. What I know is that each one present here right now 
is on this path of becoming and increasing this capacity, not just for pain, but for joy. That each one is enabled, empowered, supported, uplifted, and inspired to continue on this path one breath at a time as each one of us awaken, all of humanity awakens. And so I send a blessing right now to all 215 children in Kamloops, to each and every one who loves them, to each and every family member, friend. I send a blessing to each and every one who was responsible for those deaths. And I send a blessing to each one of us that now has this opportunity to see this history, to know a new truth, to do the healing work of staying present with the truth long enough to transform it into the truth of our love, our power, our connection, and our belonging knowing that this is what is happening, that this is what is happening. A greater experience of connection is what is happening. I breathe it in. I let it take root right here inside of me, knowing that this truth, that this prayer moves each one of us into the highest and best expression for ourselves and each other. It starts here. It continues here. The love grows here. And from this place, I release this prayer into divine law of mind, knowing it unfolds in perfect divine right timing, in perfect action, right here and now. It is done. I let it be. And so it is. And so it is indeed. Thank you so much, Reverend Cassandra. And just to remind everybody that we create sacred opportunities for personal empowerment and collective transformation through wholehearted experiences of truth and spirit. If you were inspired by today's music and message, as well as our weekly and monthly programs, we gratefully receive your gift, tithe and offering. You can donate on our website at cslwhiterock.com. You can mail us a check. Uh, the address is in our newsletter, or you can send an e-transfer. Gifts of all sizes are helpful, and your contributions make all of this possible. Thank you so much. And please join with me, uh, sorry, in declaring our prosperity affirmation. Divine love blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is.